Last month, several unidentified flying objects were spotted in the skies over North America. The U.S. government responded, albeit slowly, to the strange phenomena, shooting down crafts over Alaska and Lake Huron, but it seems not even the military can fully identify what some of these unidentified aerial phenomena have been, because now they've officially lost them. Welcome to The Crafty Cryptid, a channel dedicated to DIY crafting and spooky storytelling. If true crime, cryptid sightings, and spooky space phenomena are your thing, be sure to subscribe and ding that notification bell so you're always up to date when I post my bi-weekly episodes. Today, let's take a look back at the bizarre UFO weekend that North America was involved in in February of 2023 and discuss the new developments in the case. On January 28th, a strange craft entered U.S. airspace north of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. The craft, which was suspected to be a Chinese spy balloon, drifted over Alaska, down through Canada, and across the entire United States, surveilling everything from civilian traffic to strategically placed military bases containing intercontinental missiles. The Biden administration received bipartisan backlash for deciding not to shoot down the craft until after it had traversed the nation, gathering information as it went, until it was safely off the shore of South Carolina. Though, senior government officials claimed the decision was for the protection of the American public, who could have been caught beneath falling debris from the object, which was three times the size of a school bus. This was the first incident that sparked a huge media storm about UAPs in the skies above. Less than a week after the Chinese spy balloon was brought down, another foreign object was spotted in the skies over Alaska. On February 10th, a U.S. F-22 fighter jet shot down the unidentified flying object over Dead Horse, Alaska using a Sidewinder missile. The Pentagon declined to give a detailed description of the craft, only saying that it was far smaller than the Chinese balloon. U.S. officials continued to decline speculating on what the aircraft might be, even after a day of observation, raising questions about what kind of object could be so difficult to identify by experienced U.S. pilots and intelligence officials. U.S. Brigadier General Patrick Ryder, the Pentagon's chief spokesperson, said that American pilots who flew alongside the object before it was downed determined that there was no human aboard, which strikes me as odd phrasing. Why not say there was no person aboard, or just claim that the craft was unmanned? Why use the word human? I might be reading too much into it, but wait until you hear this story in its entirety before you make that decision. The very next day, February 11th, a third object was shot down over Canada. This one was described as cylindrical and smaller than the Chinese craft, although Canadian Defense Minister Anita Anand stopped short of referring to it as a balloon. The only other description for the object was that it was the size of a small car, was flying at 40,000 feet, or 12,200 meters, and could not maneuver. Northern Command had no idea what the objects were, neither their capabilities, purpose, nor origin. On Sunday, February 12th, a final high-altitude object was shot down over Lake Huron by the American government. The object appeared to be octagonal in structure, with strings hanging off but no discernible payload. ABC News reported that, quote, There is no sense they are anything but meteorological balloons or some sort of weather balloon, not spy balloons, at 7.44 p.m. on that same day. But an ABC article posted earlier, at 12.04 p.m., 
hinted at all four foreign objects being surveillance balloons sent out by China. Some, however, are skeptical. Are these objects truly of man-made origin? General Glenn Van Herc, the U.S. Air Force general overseeing North American airspace, was quoted that very same day as stating that he is, quote, not ruling out that the foreign objects shot down by the U.S. military could be of extraterrestrial nature. Van Herc said the military was unable to immediately determine the means by which any of the three latest objects spotted in the sky were kept aloft or where they were coming from. We're calling them objects, not balloons, for a reason, said Van Herc. Senior government officials revealed that more attention was being given to objects floating over America. They attributed the rise in the sightings to boosted surveillance capabilities by the military and not a rush of new UFOs flying through American airspace. That's not to say they were blissfully ignorant before, the official said, but there are lots of things floating around and now we are more finely attuned to it. This, in and of itself, creeps me out. If what the official is saying is false, then that means there has been an increase in the presence of strange craft in the skies. If what the government official is saying is true, however, then UAPs are constantly clouding our skies without our knowledge. What makes the three most recent objects even stranger is that the Chinese spy balloon was actually claimed by China, although they insisted it was a civilian research craft. China claimed the other three UAPs, however, were not theirs. Why would China claim one craft but not the others if they really did belong to them? None of the three latest UAPs were anything like the spy balloon, and some top-level government officials even refuse to call them anything close to a balloon. If not China, then who? And where the heck are these objects? As of February 17, 2023, the U.S. called off the search for the missing UAPs that the government shot down. All of them. Apparently, conditions in Alaska and Lake Huron made locating the objects, quote, too difficult, despite pilots trying to find them for days. Canada has been unable to locate the craft that was downed in the Yukon as well. Even though fighter jets knew exactly where the objects were gunned down, even with the heightened sensitivity of North Command's radar, and even though the pilots used aircraft with state-of-the-art sensors that can cut through the ice, the unidentified flying objects cannot be recovered. Where have they gone, and why can't our military find them? Or do you suppose that they have found the crafts and are lying to the public in order to keep what they found a secret? After all, this is not the first UFO that the military has dealt with. In fact, Project Sign and Project Blue Book, which both operated consecutively from 1947 to 1969, received more than 12,000 UFO reports. And in December of 2022, Sean Kirkpatrick, director of Aero, or the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, a branch of the federal government focused on unexplained activity around military installations, restricted airspace, and other areas of interest, is also not ruling out the possibility of extraterrestrials, but says that his job is to, quote, take a scientific approach to the research. A government report in 2021 documented more than 140 confirmed cases of what the U.S. military officially calls unidentified aerial phenomenon, 
or UAPs, observed since 2004. All but one of the sightings remain unexplained. The report included some UAPs exhibiting speed and maneuverability exceeding known aviation technology and lacking any visible means of propulsion or flight control surfaces. A report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence issued earlier in 2023, however, cited 366 additional sightings, mostly things like balloons, drones, birds, or airborne clutter, but 171 remain officially unexplained as of the writing of this script. What has appeared over the skies of North America? Are these strange phenomena terrestrial in origin or do they come from somewhere else? Have you ruled out aliens in your mind? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. To be notified when I post next, click subscribe and ding the notification bell so that YouTube's algorithm doesn't hide my bi-weekly uploads from you. As always, the sources used in my research for this episode will be left in the description box. Thanks for watching, everyone, and come back soon, cryptids.